goes on now. CNN weeknights, 8 Eastern. The crude facts are this. We are a nation of oil gluttons. With only 5% of the world's population, we use 25% of all the oil it burns. That's 876 million gallons a day, nearly three gallons for every American man, woman, and child. In one gallon cans, the oil we use daily would circle the equator more than six and a half times. We know this is bad for the environment and the climate. And more than three quarters of what we use comes from other countries, some of them places where we are increasingly unpopular. Even an old oil man admitted we need to change our ways. America is addicted to oil. So how do we kick the habit? Maybe a 12-step program is in order. Hi, my name is America, and I'm an oilaholic. Actually, maybe group therapy with some other nations might be a good idea. After all, they're doing a better job kicking the oil addiction. Ah, thank you, Chip. Cheers. Along with good wine and strong cheese, the French have great amour for nuclear power. 78% of their electricity comes from splitting atoms. As for us, it's a measly 20%. If the idea of nuclear energy gives some Americans a meltdown, what about more benign energy sources that don't raise the global thermostat and might give us a little independence from oil-rich countries? In Denmark, almost 20% of the energy comes from wind power. The amount we get from all renewables, dams, solar, geothermal, and windmills is only about 6%. So why are we so far behind? Well, for one thing, in those other countries, oil has always been much more expensive and heavily taxed, so people use less. Here in the U.S., cheap and plentiful oil has fueled an amazing century-long economic party. But no party lasts forever. And the presidential candidates recognize that. The clean energy agenda is a jobs agenda. We have been talking about climate change in Washington for years. And as usual, America is way ahead of Washington. I will push fuel economy standards to 50 miles per gallon. 50 miles per gallon by 2020. Whether it's raising taxes on gas or forcing Detroit to build more efficient cars, there are no easy choices. And as time goes on, they won't get any easier. Miles O'Brien, CNN, Atlanta.